This will be Honors Geometry Review of Chapter 11, Area. It's helpful to remember all of the formulas, but it's also more important to understand how the formulas work so you know how to use them. On a rectangle, for example, the base and the height are the sides. So to find the area of a rectangle, it's just base times height. On a parallelogram, while the formula is the same as the formula for a rectangle, it is not used the same way because the sides of the parallelogram are not perpendicular. So whichever base or side you use as the base, the height would be the perpendicular distance between that base and the other parallel side that is opposite that. So the area of a parallelogram, again, is base times height, but the height is the perpendicular distance that drops between a set of parallel sides. For a kite, the area is equal to the one half the product of the diagonals, so d1 times d2. For the area of a regular polygon, in this diagram it is a pentagon, but can be used on any regular polygon, you want to drop the apothem to one of the sides, and you find the perimeter of the polygon itself. So the area of a regular polygon is one half the apothem times the perimeter. A trapezoid has two bases. So the height is the perpendicular distance between those two bases. So the area of a trapezoid is one half the height times the sum of the bases. It's important with more complicated problems to set up a game plan where you write out the formulas you're going to use before you start plugging in numbers. Also remember that the area of a triangle can be calculated three ways. Of course, the most common, which is one half base times height. But remember in that case that the altitude is the perpendicular distance from a vertex to the side, so the base and height. If the triangle is an equilateral triangle, where all three sides are the same, then you can use the formula of side squared over 4 root 3. Or if the triangle is scalene and it's kind of difficult to find one of the altitudes, you can use Hero's formula, which is area equals S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, and take the square root of that product. Remembering that S stands for semi-perimeter, which is one half of the sum of the three sides. Also remember that a rhombus can be considered either a kite or a parallelogram. So either formula can apply depending on how the information is given. So you can use the one half D1 times D2 if you know information about the rhombus diagonals. Or you can use area equals base times height if you know information about the sides of the rhombus. And finally, remember that a regular hexagon can be divided into six equilateral triangles. So instead of using the formula for a regular polygon, we can use six times the formula for an equilateral triangle, or six times side squared over four root three for a hexagon. So let's do some practice finding the area of a shaded region. In this first diagram, again working with regular polygons we're assuming here, we have an equilateral triangle with three sectors cut out of that. So the game plan in this case would be to find the area of the equilateral triangle and subtract the area of the three sectors. So if we fill in some formulas, an equilateral triangle's area is just going to be side squared over 4 times root 3. The area of three congruent sectors, we can find the area of one sector, which is done by finding the measure of the arc, dividing that by 360 degrees, and multiplying by the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. And we're going to multiply all of that by 3 since the sectors are all congruent. So since the side of the triangle is 12, then we can plug that right into the formula and have 12 squared over 4 root 3. So the area of the equilateral triangle is 36 root 3. To find the area of the three sectors, we're going to do 3 times, since this is an equilateral triangle, the measure in the corners of the triangle represents 
the measures of the central angle for the sectors, and they are all 60 degrees. So this would be 60 degrees over 360 degrees for one sector times pi times the radius of the circle. The radius of the circle or the sector would be half of the side of the triangle, which would be 6. So times 6 squared. And don't forget to multiply by 3. So simplifying, we would have 1 half of 36 pi or 18 pi. So the total area of the shaded region would be 36 root 3 minus 18 pi units squared. Moving on to one more example. Finding the area of the shaded region, we have a regular hexagon with a circle cut out of it. So we're going to do the area of the regular hexagon and subtract the area of the circle. So since it is a regular hexagon, we can use the formula of 6 times side squared over 4 root 3. And for the circle, we'll use pi r squared for its area. Plugging in again, the side of 12, we'd have 6 times 12 squared over 4 root 3, which would result in 6 times 36 root 3, or 216 root 3 for the area of the hexagon. Finishing up the circle, we're going to have pi times the radius of the circle. The radius of the circle is the apothem of the hexagon. So draw in an apothem which remember is perpendicular and bisects the side of the hexagon, and draw in the radius so you can create a 30, 60, 90. The 60 degrees would be at the vertex of the hexagon, putting the 30 degrees at the center. So if the whole side is 12, then this piece of that 30, 60, 90 would be 6, making the apothem 6 root 3, and that is your radius of the circle. So we'll square 6 root 3, times by pi, and you'll end up with an area of a circle of 108 pi. So the area of the shaded region is 216 root 3 minus 108 pi units squared.